While Britain's Royal Air Force flew night missions over Nazi-occupied Europe during World War II, the American 8th Air Force opted to fly daylight missions, relying on its newly developed Norden bomb site for precision bombing. The Allied objective, to cripple German war production and break the will of the German people. The result of the Allied bombing strategy was destruction on a massive scale. Ernest Thorpe often dreamt of flying while growing up on the family farm near Wapella, Illinois. He earned his pilot's license at the tender age of 19 and joined the Army Air Force in May 1942. By June of 1944, Lieutenant Thorpe, now a B-17 co-pilot, was flying combat missions over Germany with the 452nd Bomb Group. On August 4th, while on his 18th mission, Thorpe's aircraft was hit by flak. He bailed out over the North Sea and was pulled out of the water by German fishermen. Thorpe spent the rest of his war as a POW. Number four, begin windmilling, is vibrating quite excessively. The plane jumped up and down, and I felt like a paradise when the engineer screamed, fire, fire. I looked very quickly to see a sheet of blue flame break out over the left wing and out by the aileron. That did it. This time, no order was given. My bailout practice came in handy. Also, the wisdom of having one shroud line always hooked to my chute. I was out of my seat, picked on the automatic pilot, down the catwalk, before the engineer had the escape hatch open. Me, with my chute attached, raring to go. Too many stories that I read of a B-17 blowing up in little bits in less than 15 seconds of visual fire. I never even thought of my individual dinghy. I wanted to get and get fast. I followed the engineer right out and didn't tarry very long before I pulled the ripcord. Well, as I said, I pulled the ripcord. Let me shoot open. And I couldn't get out how far above it is above you. I twisted around to see the plane, and this is what got me. The B-17 was still flying, burning the left wing was on fire, but it was still, I expected to see it blow up. And if it blew up in my sight or hearing, I didn't hear it. But as I said, 15 seconds behind the firewall, it's when they said it would blow up. As near as I can tell, it didn't at that time. When it went down, I don't know. But anyway, no. As I said, the chute opened up. I looked and seen the plane going. I looked around. I seen a chute way below me, which was an engineer. He didn't pull a chute. He was a Jewish boy. He waited until I almost hit the water before he pulled the chute because he didn't want the Germans to see him. Me, I wanted the Germans to see I figured if they didn't see me coming down in the chute, I would not be rescued. And I could see off in the distance and see the island of Heligland. and didn't look too far away, actually. It's 10 miles away from it. And then I could see boats turning in my direction. I thought, okay, I'll get picked up in about five minutes. <laughs> By VE Day in June 1945, the Army Air Force in Europe had lost nearly 10,000 bombers, over 8,400 fighters, and a sobering 79,265 airmen killed in action. Despite these huge losses, there is no denying the Air Force's contribution to final victory. <laughs>